Hi guys, and welcome to JP Academia. We can model the information transfer of our body using electrical systems. It includes the operation of our brain, spinal cord, muscle, and body organs. But what is the source of these electrical signals? Well, it is the electrochemical potentials present in the nerve cells or neurons. Neurons is just a specialized cell that forms a complex network to receive, process, and transmit information within our body. Let's start this video lecture. And this is the outline of this video lecture. We will start by discussing first the nervous system, neuron, uh, the importance of giant axon of squid, then the physics aspect that includes the electrical uh, potentials, action potential, and the action circuit. The nervous system can be classified into two parts. So first, we have the central nervous system as shown here in the figure that controls the voluntary functions. And second, we have the autonomic nervous system that controls the involuntary body functions. CNS or the central nervous system includes the following. We have the brain, spinal cord, and the peripheral nerves. While the ANS or the autonomic nervous system controls and maintains the functionalities of the inner organs, including the heart and the intestines. It can be seen in the figure that the basic unit of the nervous system is the neuron that allows the transfer and reception of electrical pulses that mainly manages uh, the information transfer. Now, let us focus on the neuron. Neurons can be divided into three groups. First, we have the sensory neurons, which receive stimuli from sensory organs uh, and monitoring the external and internal surrounding of the body. Second, we have the motor neurons that manage signals that controls the muscle cells. This signal is provided by still the sensory neurons and the central nervous system located in the brain. Third, we have the interneurons that mainly transmit signals from one neuron to another. Now, we have here in the figure uh, a representation of a neuron. And here are some of the important parts of a neuron. First, we have the dendrites. And this mainly receives signals from other cells. This is the input ends of the neurons. Second, the one in circle is the nucleus. The nucleus controls the entire neuron. While we have here the axon that mainly transfers signals to other cells and organs, and this is the extension of the neuron cells. Then next, uh, fourth, we have the node of Ranvier. Uh, these are the gaps observed along the axons that allow diffusion of ions. Important later when we talk about the electrical potential of our axon. Next, we have the myelin sheet. Uh, this is a fatty material that increases the speed of the signal. This sheet is produced by the Schwann cell, located also uh, near it, so the one uh, in the circle. Then we have the axon terminal. This forms junctions with other cells. Experimentally, the electrical and chemical properties of the axon can be measured by placing a small needle-like probes into the axon sample. This is challenging actually. Uh, in reality because the diameter of most axons is very small. The largest axon of human has a diameter of about 20 micrometer. However, the squid has a giant axon with a diameter of about 500 micrometer or about 0.5 millimeters. Thus, it is easier to use giant axon of squid to study neurons in the laboratory. The environment of the human body consists of salt and molecules that dissociate into positive and negative ions. Although they are considered as electrical conductors, their resistivity is also significant. This is similar with the axon. Its inside is filled with ionic fluid and the axon membrane serves as a leaky electrical insulator. And therefore, it is not a perfect insulator. Some current can leak out through the membrane. Outside the axon, we have mostly positive 
uh, sodium ions as shown here in uh, green, this one. Then, uh, and we have the negative chloride ions also outside uh, the axon. Inside the axon, we have mostly positive potassium ions and large negatively charged molecules here uh, represented in color blue circles. If the axon do not conduct an electrical pulse, the membrane is highly permeable to potassium ions while it is uh, slightly permeable to sodium ions. In addition, the membrane is impermeable to large uh, ions. Therefore, there are more potassium ions going out of the axon compared to the potassium entering the axon. This produces a negative potential uh, inside the axon relative to the outside environment. This has the value of about 17 millivolts, which is known as the resting potential. An action potential is observed when the membrane potential of a cell rapidly rises and falls. This occur in different types of animal cells such as muscle cells and neurons. In neurons, it is the propagation of signals along the axon going to the synaptic bulbs at the end of the axon. I have here the approximate shape of a common action potential. This one, the action potential. The potential along the membrane started at a certain level. So here we have uh, negative 70, 70 millivolts, which is the resting potential. Then suddenly it spikes above the threshold. So we have here the threshold uh, potential, which is about negative uh, 55 millivolts due to a stimulus, this one. After the applied stimulus, the potential rises to a peak of about 30 to 40 millivolts. Then it rapidly falls out. So the repolarization, uh, this is the depolarization, repolarization, rapidly falls out to about a negative 90 uh, millivolts. So we have here, so we have the negative 90 millivolts and comes back to the resting potential of 70 or negative 70 millivolts. The propagation speed depends on the type of the axon. Okay. We have now established that the potential difference is present due to the selective diffusion of positive ions through the membrane, which creates an increase of positive charges outside the cell. An electric field is also present. Given the resting potential, which is about negative 70 millivolts, uh, present on a given cell membrane thickness, so which is this one, 6 times 10 to the negative 9 meters, and therefore, we have this electric field uh, magnitude. Now, uh, let us consider the axon membrane as a cylindrical capacitor shown here uh, with the radius of A with the thickness of B, so variable B. And therefore, uh, we, we can express the accumulated charge Q at the membrane surface as, as this. So we have Q is equal to kappa epsilon naught S, the surface area times E, the electric field, wherein your kappa is about 7 and your epsilon naught here is the electrical uh, permittivity constant in free space. The capacitance for the membrane with thickness B as illustrated here in the drawing is shown. So this is uh, C. C is equal to Q over V and therefore we have this expression uh, kappa epsilon naught s over b for the capacitance value. Uh, you can also get the total charge across the axon membrane by multiplying c times b. The capacitance and charge for myelinated axon are smaller than for the non-myelinated axon as shown here. I have here an approximate figure of the capacitance per unit length, so farad per meter of the axon. Next, uh, let's talk about the resistance of the membrane, uh, the membrane material. Let us start with this simple circuit. Uh, given that the membrane is not a perfect insulator, 
we will have a leakage current I, shown here, mainly determined by the resistance value uh, R, which is this one, this, this R, uh, which refers to the resistance value of the membrane and uh, represented by R sub M. Using this expression for the resistance, we can express it uh, using the electrical uh, resistivity of the membrane. So using our usual formula here, rho L over E, we have now this expression. So rho sub M, which is the electrical resistivity of the membrane, the membrane thickness B, and the surface area S. The leakage current I sub M uh, discharges the capacitor, as represented here, and can we express as follows. So the change in charge as a function of time, shown here, is equal to negative I sub M, and by Ohm's law, this is also equal to negative V over R sub M. And we can also express this change in charge, dq over dt, which is equal to C dv over d, uh, dt. And we have used this one in our discussion of capacitance. And therefore, uh, using these two expressions, we can have this differential equation. So dv over dt is equal to negative v, the potential difference over R sub m times C. Solving this differential equation, you will get this uh, solution. So V as a function of time is equal to the initial voltage, V0, times E to the negative T, the time, over tau. Your tau here is the uh, time constant for this RC circuit, uh, and therefore your tau is equal to R times C, or the resistance value of the membrane, times the capacitance value. In an axon, there is a resistance due to the fluid inside and, of course, outside the membrane, represented here. The membrane can be modeled as a leaky insulator, as I have illustrated earlier in the previous slide, that can be expressed in terms of the capacitance and resistance. When a potential difference is placed between inside and outside the axon, we can represent a small axon cross-section length of delta x, let's say, as this electrical circuit. And we have these uh, repeating patterns of resistance uh, R0, Ri, then this resistance and this capacitance component. We can approximate the circuit model for axon by neglecting the capacitances. And this is to simplify our circuit. This will result into an infinite length of resistances. Let us simplify this by representing the total resistance uh, to the right of this line B here as R sub T shown here. So before I've, sh I've shown that we have these repeating patterns and this is to calculate the voltage drop across a small length from uh, let's say from line A to line B. Uh, let R sub T be the equivalent resistance uh, from the right of this line A. So we will calculate this uh, effective resistance. Then we have the following. So we have this expression. So R0 plus Ri. So we'll assume that uh, they are uh, in series. But first, uh, we should get the expression for these two resist resistors, which are parallel with respect to each other. So we have this expression. So the equivalent resistance of Rm and R sub T plus the resistance value of this two. And if your R, Ri is equal to R0, so we will express that as resistance R, we can have uh, the following. So this two uh, will become R plus R. So we have 2R plus this expression. And therefore, uh, we can multiply both sides by Rm plus Rt to get uh, this expression. Now, uh, we can cancel uh, this term here to uh, simplify our, our equation, and therefore, we will have this uh, expression. Then, uh, we add uh, r squared uh, in the left-hand side then to the right-hand side of our equation to further simplify this one in, in order to isolate r sub t. 
and therefore doing your algebra we will get this final expression using the equivalent resistance expression we can arrive with this expression for the voltage drop across a small section of length of the circuit so that's a section a and b we're in the beta here for this expression refers to the resistance expression and that's it for this lecture i have shown that we can model the axon part of a neuron as an electrical circuit thank you hi if you have learned something in this video and you like my content please consider subscribing my youtube channel gp academy see you in the next video